Hey, this is Brandon Welch. And Tyson Porlis. We're the co-owners of the Beale Racing NHRA Top Fuel Dragster. Today we're going to tell you about the similarities and differences between a Top Fuel Dragster and a Nitro Funny Car. Let's go. To the uninitiated, a top fuel dragster and a nitro funny car couldn't look more different. But in fact, just like a chimpanzee and a human share 99% of their DNA, a top fuel dragster and a nitro funny car are almost identical, but it's that 1% difference that makes all the difference in the world for how they perform on track, how a crew chief manages the tune-up, and how a driver drives the car. This is a top fuel motor. It's virtually identical to a nitro funny car motor. Everything in here is almost exactly the same, from the 110 gallon fuel pump, the dual 44 amp mags, the Hemi V8 style block, the manifold, the heads, the blower, it's exactly the same. You could basically take this motor, plug and play, right into a Nitro Funny Car, and be on your way. Behind the motor plate, there's a five or a six disc clutch married to a hydraulic cannon, which connects to a reverser that all it has is a forward and reverse gear coupled straight back to a 12 inch billet rear end. These drive lines are identical between a nitro funny car and a top fuel dragster. The only difference is, in a funny car, that drive shaft goes right between the driver's legs. One of the most glaring differences between a nitro funny car and a top fuel dragster is obviously the design of the chassis. Now a nitro funny car has a shorter 125 inch stiff rigid wheelbase, whereas the top fuel dragster is 300 inches, 25 feet long, purpose built for straight line speed and designed to flex as it's going down the track. So there's two distinct wings on a top fuel dragster that are creating a constant struggle for this car the entire way down the track. This wing here sitting directly over the rear wheels creating over 5,000 pounds of downforce on the back of the car, whereas the front wing is fighting to keep the front of the car glued to the track. These wings create more downforce. They also create drag, which scrubs a little bit of speed off on the top end of the run. Though funny car spoilers create less downforce, they also create less drag, which causes them to have higher top end speeds. What is it like to drive a top fuel dragster compared to a nitro funny car? You know, I've been really lucky to be licensed in both a Nitro Funny Car and compete in that class as well as in a Top Fuel Dragster. And I have to tell you, the procedure for driving the cars is identical. Much like the motor parts and the drive line is identical, uh, as far as the, the controls and the processes used from startup, burnout, backup, stage, hit the gas, steer, all of that is the same. Pull the parachutes, it's effectively identical. What's different though is the dynamics of driving a car at speed under four and a half G's of acceleration between a short wheelbase car with the engine in front of you and a long wheelbase car with the engine behind you. The short wheelbase funny car, I'm sitting right between the rear wheels. The car wags as you go down the track. So a lot of the steering input is, is done through the seat of the pants, feeling lateral movement and countering steering uh, to, to counter some of that lateral movement and keep the car in the group. Whereas a top fuel dragster, it feels like the motor behind you is pushing you through the air. So effectively, get the car pointed straight two to 300 feet down track and don't touch the steering. In fact, as a funny car driver by training, I tend to overdrive this car at the finish line because I'm used to really having to fight a funny car and I've got to train my hands to stay still because this car just wants to go straight. The other difference from a personal safety perspective is in a nitro funny car with that motor at the tip of my toes, the drive shaft going right between my legs, if that car's getting toward the finish line, I know there's a chance that that motor's gonna let go and I'm gonna have a lap full of parts, oil, and fire. So it's sometimes it's a little bit more of a crunch down at the top end, just hoping nothing bad happens, versus in a top fuel dragster, I can just leg it to the finish line, let that thing blow up, and let the crew guys clean it up. It's great. Another major difference between a top fuel dragster and a nitro funny car is how a crew chief tunes the car for maximum performance. Think about a nitro funny car. It's short, it's stiff, it makes less downforce early, and it's less forgiving. It's also about three to 400 pounds heavier than a top fuel dragster. So a crew chief has to account for those variables by 
engaging the clutch a little bit slower. So they move the throw up bearing a little bit slower than they would in a top field dragster. But because it's a heavier car, they need more weight on the fingers of the clutch to clamp down. That engagement that they do have, they need it strong. So they put more weight on the clutch fingers, uh, but move the throw up bearing slower in the clutch. Additionally, because the car doesn't have as much downforce, you can't overpower that, that downforce that you have. So in the timing, the crew chiefs will often take 10 to 15 degrees of timing more out of a, of a timing graph for a nitro funny car than they would for a top fill dragster. Now, funny car, think finesse it down the track. It's incredibly tricky to get that car A to B and get a maximum, maximum a mile an hour and, and a low ET. So on the contrast to that, a top fuel dragster has its length and its flexibility and its wings and downforce that are working in its advantage. So a crew chief on a top field dragster can move the throw out bearing out of the way very fast, which engages the clutch quickly. It's a lighter car, so you don't need as much static weight on the clutch fingers, but you can move the throw out bearing very quickly. Additionally, because it has so much downforce, the motor can create a lot more power early in the run to drive the car forward. So the crew chief doesn't need to take as much timing out of the tune-up in the timing graph as they would with a nitro funny car. Uh, lastly, if you think about where the performance advantages are for a top field dragster or a nitro funny car, a top field dragster at the eighth mile, 660 feet down track, can do up to 298 miles per hour, whereas a nitro funny car is 10 to 20 degrees behind that on their best day. So think aggressive early versus a funny car finesse down the track, and a top field dragster is generally more forgiving to the crew chief than a, than a nitro funny car would be. Thanks guys for participating. Got any more questions? Drop them into our Facebook page, uh, Beal Racing or Brandon Welch, and uh, we'll be happy to see you it's next time. At Welch for the win. Like, subscribe, follow. Let's Tell your friends. It. All right, bye. <laughs>